I've seen some confusion on this topic, so I wanted to clear up a few things. This is a Steam Deck. This isn't a Steam Deck. This isn't a Steam Deck. This is a Steam Deck. This isn't a Steam Deck. This isn't a Steam Deck, but this is a Steam Deck? Question mark? I mean, yeah. Yeah, it, uh, it kind of is. Hey there, how's it going? I'm tech to me welcome. Thanks for clicking on the video today. When the Steam Deck ushered in a new era of handheld gaming, it was like young tech dweeb's fantasy come to life. Not the fantasy where the cool kids at the cool kids table invited me to sit with them in a non-ironic way. That never came true. I mean the fantasy that I had about being able to play computer games in places that aren't at my computer, like the bus, or the porch, or the dinner table, or the couch, or the park, or my bed, or your mom's bed. <laughs> But I digest. Handheld PC gaming is a magical thing, but there's one little problem. And it's a big one. Handheld PCs are big. None of them are pocketable. And while the bigger size makes them comfy to game on, sometimes I want to play games on a little doodad. And it's not even because my skinny dweeb arms lack the muscles to hold the big ones for very long. Although that's part of it, to be fair. These things need big honking batteries because x86 architecture, which I totally know about and could totally explain what it is if I wanted to, but I don't, that x86 stuff is all pretty power hungry. Powerful, you can run some good looking games, but definitely power hungry. You can play retro games all the live long day on a tiny pocket friendly retro handheld, but there's no really pocket friendly PC handhelds out there. I think lots of us in this handheld gaming space have always wanted a truly portable pocket-friendly handheld PC, like a Steam Deck Lite or whatever. Not something super powerful that needs to play amazing AAA games, but something small and power efficient that can run all those amazing indie games and older games that don't require much juice. We're living through a golden age of indie games right now, and it's a shame that we can't bring these with us in our pocket to play when we have a few minutes to spare waiting for an oil change or if we get stuck on an escalator. And if you ever wanted that, then you're going to be excited because a little bird told me that your Android retro handhelds are basically just Steam Decks now too. Isn't that right, bird? And now you're probably saying, what? Tech dweeb? What? All my favorite lower spec Steam games on my retro handhelds? What? To which I'd say, yeah, 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 you, you can, yeah. PC games on Android. It's here. It's actually here. And I've been blown away at how genuinely awesome it is to have my Steam games on retro doodads. With cloud saves too. And I'm not even talking about some complicated Winlater stuff with a million settings. I'm going to show you the easy and lazy method that I use, which is GameHub Lite, along with a few key tweaks that I like to make for performance and compatibility. And it's like easy as heck. And we all know how easy heck is. And not just getting up and running, it's also easier than ever to make settings tweaks to improve the performance. I think lots of people assume that it's hard. I, I did before I figured out that it's not. Just like two or three settings to tinker with and you can get way better performance and battery efficiency for your Steam games. The only issue with getting in on this PC emulation stuff right now is that not every PC game will work perfectly. Tons will work if your device can handle them, but some won't. The good news is that there are some simple things that we can do to get some problematic games working. And I'm going to show you all the little tricks that I've picked up along the way. Like I said, we're going to be doing this in GameHub. And GameHub is like a front-end launcher and driver and application manager. It runs Winlater under the hood, which is a Windows emulation program for Android. It's like someone took a bunch of spare parts, hot glued them together, painted it and made it look all cool, and then later that person found out you can run PC games on your Android handhelds and they played Megabonk on their I'm Thor using GameHub. GameHub just simplifies PC emulation, sort of like how SteamOS takes a whole bunch of complicated Linux stuff and makes it easy so you don't have to tinker, but probably. There are two versions of GameHub, the official GameHub and GameHub Lite. The official GameHub is released by GameSir, the controller company. And there are some privacy concerns with like data tracking and stuff. I know some people out there care a lot about data tracking, but I, per I personally don't. I'm pretty sure the Chinese already know that I'm into fun socks and that I spend too much time researching how to act like an adult when I'm around other adults. The main reason I use GameHub Lite is just because it doesn't need an account to log in. The magic of GameHub and GameHub Lite is that most of the time, 
it just works. It auto-installs the drivers, launches your games in a wine or proton container, and boom, you're playing Silk Song on the same retro doodad you use for retro games. It's like having a magical second Steam Deck mode hiding inside your Android doodad. One thing worth mentioning, a game hub works best on Snapdragon chips because they have Adreno GPUs, which have the best and most compatible GPU drivers right now. Other chips with Mali GPUs don't have the same level of compatibility. Not that they don't work, actually in a recent update to GameHub they improved the compatibility on Mali GPUs, so it does work, it's just not going to be as compatible as a Snapdragon chip. Worth trying if you have a Mali device though. To install GameHub Lite, it's actually redonkulously simple, as the kids say. Do, do uh, kids still say redonkulous? I hope so. I'll include the download links for both GameHub and GameHub Lite in the thingy below. I'll be going with GameHub Lite, and in the GitHub just find the releases and then scroll down to find the APKs. Oh, one thing to know, there are three versions that you're going to find here. The Antutu one makes your device think that it's running a benchmark app, so it lets it run at the max clock speeds for your CPU and your GPU. And I don't know what the PUBG one does, but it's a similar concept, I think. And this can lead to better performance, which you might want if you play high-end stuff. How However, just know that since you're going to be maxing out the clocks, you're generally going to be running at a higher power level, and you'll be generating more heat and fan noise, and you'll get less battery life. I go with the regular version because I, I mostly just play lower spec indie games, and I'd rather prioritize battery life over performance. Once you have that downloaded, tap it in your downloads to install it, and then when it's done, go ahead and start it up. In the official game hub, you're going to be greeted by a login screen and you can log in with uh, Google or whatever, or make an account. With the light version, it takes you right into the app. Immediately, you can log into Steam. Go ahead and do that. Now, you can use your Steam account and password to do that, but if you're ever worried about security, just use the authenticator in the Steam app on your phone. This way, no third party ever gets to know or see your password. It's, it's the most secure way to log in. Also, it only takes a second and you don't have to type your password or pull up your email verification. Laziness is as good a reason as any. Once that's done, you're going to see your Steam account there, but it's not very convenient to scroll through thousands of games looking for what you want to play. So you can just search for the games that you want to install. Let's start with a game that everyone loves, Bellatro. I like this one because it's a super small download. Just go here to get game and then you're going to get an install window. Sometimes you need to wait for it to calculate the size and then select install. It'll give you this warning that you should have your screen on and the app should be left open while installing. And when it's done, you're ready to play. Select play now. And then you're going to see that it, it, it needs to download more stuff. That, that's because GameHub will automatically install everything you need. Firmware, compatibility layers, GPU drivers, it, it's doing all that stuff for you. It will also sync your cloud saves here. And when it's done, your game will start up, probably. And if it does, you can play it. Pretty cool, right? Yay! Yay! We'll cover what to do about performance and compatibility in a bit, but now that we have at least one game working, let's do a little tour of the game hub settings. First up, we have the in-game menu. Swipe in from the left or press the back button on your device and this will pop out. Here you can disable the screen trackpad. That's useful if your game keeps thinking there's a mouse attached and you don't want that. The next section is performance stuff and there's lots of useful stuff in here. The first is this native rendering plus option. Turning on native rendering can have a big performance impact on some games. It can make them run way better, but it can also just make some games smoother. I don't know if you can tell that on here on the camera, but in Silk Song, the frame rate says it's a solid 60 FPS, but it doesn't actually feel like that. It's a bit stuttery. Turning on native rendering fixes this immediately, and now it feels silky smooth, pun intended. You can also enable or disable the frame limiter. I actually use this often to lock the game down at a lower FPS just to save on battery life. Then we have some visual options. HDR just increases the contrast, I don't bother with that. CRT display effect is a basic kind of scan line thing. It looks pretty bad and I never use this. Super resolution though, I love this. I use this on almost every game. By default, these games run at 720p, which is good for performance. I never really bother changing that, but super resolution upscales them to your screen's native resolution. And it generally looks really good, especially for pixel art games. I don't know what magic this upscaler uses, but it makes pixel art look so good. Under that is the HUD. You can disable that or toggle options if you want them. The last tab is just some Android settings and then you also have a virtual keyboard button down there in case you ever need to type something. And you can also exit the game from this menu if you need to force close a game. 
Out of the game, we also have a ton of options. If you click these three dots when you have a game selected, you can go into the PC game settings for this game. And in here is a ton of stuff that you can mostly ignore unless you need to tinker for performance and compatibility. Speaking of which, let's talk about performance and compatibility. And we're going to start with performance because this is a bit more straightforward than when a game doesn't work. There's tons of stuff that you could try, and I'm not going to be able to cover every possible tweak, but today I'm going to sh give you the high-level stuff. Nothing complicated. The, be the best bang for the buck settings to tweak. Also, when you do any of these tweaks, do them one at a time. Make a change and try it out and see what happens. Just take your time and do it right. Also, your device might have tweaks that you can do on the device itself. For example, this Retroid Pocket 5 has a performance mode toggle, so you can turn up the power and get better performance. iNeo devices take this a step further and let you tweak all the settings within a performance profile. For example, they have this option to lock the GPU at max frequency, which has a big effect on games that rely heavily on the GPU, like lots of harder to run PC games. And of course, the game itself probably has graphic settings that you can change. You can lower some options in the game to make it an easier to run thing for GameHub. As for the GameHub stuff, we already talked about the native rendering plus option. Definitely try that as a first step. Next up is the GPU driver. If you go into the compatibility section of the game settings, you're going to see a GPU driver section. And the default driver for this Snapdragon chip is Turnip V25.0.0 R21. That's an older driver. It is not the most recent, not by a long shot. If we scroll up, you're going to see that there's a whole heck ton of newer options, including up near the top, the latest V26 driver. That's the latest at the time of filming this video. Select that and it's going to automatically download the driver and then you can pick it. Next up is the translator parameters. And it sounds complicated, but it's really not. In here, there's a ton of stuff, but you can ignore all this stuff down here and focus on these top options. Extreme, performance, stable, and compatible. Start by setting it to extreme and try it out. That's usually a big boost to performance, but if the game starts crashing or if it doesn't even boot, then you can come back in here and lower the parameter one notch down to performance and then test your game. And if you still have problems, go down to stable and then compatible, which should give you the best chance of the game not crashing, but it might not have the best performance down there. So you got to kind of try to find the balance. You can tinker in the settings more. There's lots of stuff in here that might help, but lots of this stuff feels like stabbing in the dark. It's kind of random and I don't want to suggest that you do that because it rarely helps for me. If a, if a game doesn't work good with the options I've told you about already, it's kind of a lost cause and I don't usually bother with it. At least for now. GameHub gets better and better all the time so it's worth checking at some point in the future if some game that you want suddenly works or works better. But what do we do when a game doesn't even work? You can't even get into the game. And there can be so many reasons and things you can try. And I'm not going to be able to get into all of them. But I'm going to give you the easy things that I always try first that usually get the job done. If you ever have a problem with Steam stuff, like Steam-based errors or if your cloud saves aren't working, go into the Steam section of the menu and try changing the Steam client version. Lightweight mode is good for compatibility, but you can run into cloud save issues there, so only use that if you're troubleshooting. Those performance presets that I told you about earlier can also help with troubleshooting compatibility. If a game isn't working or if it's crashing, set it to the compatible preset and then move it up to a higher tier of preset if it works fine at the lower preset. The main reason that a game won't work is some sort of mismatch between your device hardware and the game engine and the compatibility layer. So trying different compatibility layers is going to be what you need to do for games that don't work. Under the compatibility layer options, you're going to see a few in here. Wine, Proton 9 and 10 for ARM64, and Proton 9 and 10 for X64. And they are all worth trying because some games run great on one but not the other, and vice versa. However, the stuff in this menu is only one piece of the pie. The other piece is down here under CPU Translator. These two sections, the layer and the translator, they go hand in hand. So when you pick, for instance, Proton 9 X64 as the layer, down here under the translator, you're going to see that there are four different Box64 presets. And you'll want to try each of these. Start at the top and work your way down. And you're going to want to try both Proton versions with all these. Proton 9 and 10 with each translator option. And with any luck, you're going to find the magic combination that just works. When you go with Proton 9 or 10, the, the ARM64 version, this translator menu won't show you Box64. It'll show FEX, which stands for something, probably. 
for this, I don't find changing the FEX version ever helps. I've never found a game that works on one FEX versus another, so I usually just pick the top one. Oh, and if you ever get a missing translator settings error when you're booting a game, this menu is where you go. Just pick a CPU translator here to get rid of that error. And there are more things you can try to maybe get your game working. There's extra components that you can manually install. Sometimes you'll get weird audio or video problems and you need to install special stuff. I can't go over everything, but what I did go over should get you up and running most of the time. However, just know that for a plethora of reasons, some games don't work at all, no matter what you do. My advice is not to stress about it. Don't let the tinkering get in the way of your fun. If a game doesn't work, try the basic stuff, and if it still doesn't work, just move on to a different game. Game Hub and x86 emulation is getting better and better all the time, so it might just work very soon, all on its own. It just play something else until then. But until then, even now, this Game Hub PC games on your Android doodad stuff is absolutely worth doing. It's getting easier and better all the time. This is a tantalizing taste of the Steam on Android promise that we've been waiting for, and I'm enjoying the heck out of playing all these games on my Android doodads. Honestly, this is my latest addiction. Modern indie games on my retro handhelds. I'm kind of in love with this. Being able to play my Steam versions of Megabonk and Silk Song and Ball X Pit and Sea of Stars and all these other amazing indies. More demanding games too, that's fun. To have graphically impressive stuff running on your tiny little retro doodads, that's a hoot. But indie games are what has my attention right now. I honestly feel like we're basically there. PC emulation on Android is at a place where I'm happy to use it on every Android device that I have. I was playing freaking Skyrim on my retro flip two the other day. Like what? Anyways, I hope you found this helpful and entertaining and stimulating. Let me know in the comments how stimulated you are. I'm so stimulated that I need to take a bath. Also, I have some new bubble bath that I've been excited to try. It says it smells like mint and eucalyptus and I'm curious to know if I'm going to feel like I'm swimming in a tub of toothbrushing spit. I'll leave a pinned comment to let you know how it goes. So uh, I'm going to go do that now. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.